Shadow Kiss, Chapter Twenty Three. Others in the hall stopped and stared. I felt like I had just been hit in the face. Only it had not been my face; it had been Lisa's. I shifted into her mind and became instantly aware of her surroundings and everything happening to her. Like the next time, rock flew up from the ground and slammed into her cheeks. They were guided by a freshman. I don't know anything about, save that. He was a rose. The rocks hurt both of us, but I withheld my screaming this time and gritted my teeth as I shifted back to the hallway with my friends. Northwest sides of campus, between the weird-shaped pond and the fence. I told them. With that, I broke away from them and headed out the door, running as hard as I could. Towards the part of campus where they were holding Lisa, I could not see all of the people gathered there through her eyes, but I recognized a few. Jess and Ruff were there. Brad and Bree, the drovers, the drovers guy, some others. The rocks were still hitting her, still cutting into her face. She don't scream or cry though. She just kept telling them over and over to stop, while two other guys held her between them. Just meanwhile, kept telling her to make them stop. I only half listened to them through her mind. The reason don't matter, and I have already figured it out. They were going to torture her until she agreed to join their group. They must have forced Brad on and the others in the same way. A suffocating feeling suddenly overwhelmed me, and I stumbled, unable to breathe as water smoothed my face. Fixating harder, I separated myself from Lisa. That was happening to her, not me. Someone was torturing her with the water now, using it to cut off her hair. Whoever it was took the time, alternatively filling her face with water, then pulling it back, and then repeating. She gaped and sputtered, still asking them to stop when she could. Just continued watching with calculating eyes. Don't ask them. Make them. I tried running harder, but I could only go. So much faster. They were at one of the farthest point of campus boundaries. It was a lot to distance to cover, and with every agonizing step, it felt more of Lisa's pain and grew angrier and angrier. What kind of a guardian could I ever be to her if I could not even keep her safe here on campus? As the air user neck went next, and suddenly it was like she was being tortured by a Victor's henchman all over again. Air. Was alternatively taken from her, leaving her gaping, and then slammed back into her, crushing her face. It was agony, and it brought back all the memories of her capture, the all the terror and horror she could be in trying to forget. The air user stopped, and it was too late. Something snapped inside of her when Ruff stepped up next to use fire. I was so close that I actually saw it flare up in his hands, but he don't see me. None of them had been paying attention to their surroundings. And there could be too much noise from their own specters to hear me. I slammed into Ruff before the fire could leave his hand, pulling him to the ground and punching his face in one skilled manner. Where a few of the others, including Jess, ran to help him and tried to pray me away. At least they tried until they realized who it was. Those who saw my face immediately backed off. Those who don't quickly learn the hard way. When I went after them, I could leave. I could. Taken out three full trained guardians earlier today. A group of spoiled royal morai took hardly any effort. It was ironic too, and a sign of how unwilling some morai were to lift a hand in their defense. That while this group had been so eager to use magic to torture Lisa, none of them had actually thought to use it against me. Most of them scattered before I could even lay a hand on them, and I don't care enough to go after them. I just wanted them away from Lisa. Admittedly, I gave Raff a few extra punches, even though after he could go on down, since I held him responsible for his whole mess, I finally let him alone, lying on the ground and groaning. As I straightened, straightened up and looked for Jess, the other culprit here, I quickly found him. He was the only one left. Most of them scattered before I could even lay a hand on them. I don't care enough to go after them. I just wanted them away from Lisa. Admittedly, I gave Raff. Ralph, a few extra punches, even after he got gone down. Since I held him responsible for his whole mess, I finally let him alone, lying on the ground and groaning. As I straightened up and looked for Jess, the other culprit here, I quickly found him. He was the only one left. I ran over to him and then skidded to halt, confused. He was just standing there, staring into space. 
mouth hanging open, I looked at him, looked at where he was standing, and then looked back at him. Spiders. Lisa said. Her voice made me jump. She stood off to the side with wet hair, braised and cut, but otherwise okay. In the moonlight, her pale features made her look almost as ghost and pants on. Her eyes never left chest as he spoke. He thinks he's sleeping spiders, seeing spiders, and that they were crawling on him. What do you think? Should have gone with snakes? I look back at Jess. The expression on his face sent chills down my spine. It was like he was locked in his own private nightmare. Scarier, still worse what I felt through the bond. Usually, when Lisa used magic, it felt golden and warm and wonderful. This time, it was different. It was black and slim and thick. I think you should stop, I said. In the distance, I heard people running towards us. It's all over. It was an initiation ritual, she said. Well, kind of. They asked me to join a couple of days ago and I refused. But they bugged me again today and kept saying they know something important about Christian and Adrian. I started to get, it started to get to me. So I finally told them I could come to one of their sessions. But that I don't know anything about compulsion. It was an act. I just wanted to know what they know. She tattled her head, barely at all, but something must have happened to Jess, his eyes widened further, as he continued to silently scream. Even though I had not technically agreed yet, they put me through their initial ritual. They wanted to know how much I could really do. It is a way to test how strong people are in compulsion, torture them till they cannot stand it, and then, in the heat of it all, People lash out and try to compel the attackers to stop. If the victim manages any sort of compulsion at all, the pe- the persons in the group. She regarded just carefully. He seems to be in his own world and it was a very, very bad one. I guess this makes me their president, huh? Stop it, I said. The feel of his twisted magic was making me nasnia. She and Adrian had mentioned something like this before. Thus idea of making people see things that were not there. They could jokingly call it super compulsion and it was horrible. This is not how spirit is supposed to be used. This is not you. It is wrong. She was breathing heavily, sweet, breaking out, long her brow. I cannot let go of it, she said. You can. I said, I touched her arm. Give it to me. She briefly turned from Jess and looked at me, astonished before fixing her gaze back on him. What? You cannot use magic. I focused hard on the bond on her mind. I could not take the magic exactly, but I could take the darkness it brought on. It was what I could be doing for a while now, I realized. Every time I could be worried and wished she could calm down and fight dark feelings she had because i was taking it all from her i was observing it just as anna had done for saint valdemar it was what adrin had seen when the darkness jumped from her arura to mine and this this abuse of spirit using it to maliciously harm another and not for self-defense was bringing the worst side effects of all in her it was corrupting and wrong and i could not let her have it all thoughts of my own madness or rage were completely irrelevant at this moment. No, I agreed. I cannot, but you can use me to let it go. Focus on me. Release it all. It is wrong. You don't want it. She started at me again, eyes wide and desperate. Even without direct eye contact, she was still able to torture Jess. I both saw and felt the fight she waked. He could hurt her so much. She wanted him to pay. He had to. And yet at the same time, she knew I was right. But it was hard. So hard for her to let go. Suddenly, the burn of that black magic vanished from the bond. Along with the sick- sickening sensation, something hit me like a blast of wind in the face. And I struggled backward. I shuddered as a weird sensation twisted my stomach. It was like sparks, like a coil of electricity burning within me. Then it... Two was gone. Jess fell to his knees, free of the night max. Lisa sank with visible relief. She was still scared and hurt over what had happened, but she has no longer consumed 
with that terrible destructive rage that had driven her to punish Jess. The urge within her had disappeared. The only problem was it was in me now. I turned on Jess and it was like nothing else existed in the universe except him. He had tried to ruin me in the past. He could torture Lisa and hurt so many others. It was unacceptable. I looked for him. His eyes had only a moment to widen with Jera before my fist connected with his face. His head jerked back and blood spurted from his nose. I heard Lisa scream for me to stop but I could not. He had to pay for what he had done to her. I grabbed him by the shoulders and threw him hard against the ground. He was yelling now to begging for me to stop. He shut up when I hit him again. I felt Lisa's hands calling at me, trying to pull me off, but she was not strong enough. I kept hitting him. There was no sign of the strategic peace fighting I could use earlier with him and his friends or even against his dreamed. This was unfocused and primal. This was me being controlled by the madness I had taken from Lisa. Then another set of hands ripped me away. These hands were strong, dampier hands, back my muscles, yearned through years of training. It was Eid. I struggled against his hold. We were closely matched, but he outweighed me. Let me go, I yelled. To my complete and utter horror, Lisa was now kneeling at Jess's side, studying him with concern. I it made no sense. How could she do that? After what he had done, I saw compassion on her face and a moment later the burn of her healing magic it lit our bond as she took away some of the worst of his injuries. No. I screamed, straining against Edol. You cannot. That was when the other guardians showed up, Drimit and Clist in the lead. Christian and Adren Nar nowhere in sight. They probably could not have kept peace with the others. Organized chills followed. Those from the society who reminded were gathered up and headed off the questioning. Lisa likewise was taken away, a lead off to get her injuries treated. A part of me that was buried in all the bloodless emotion wanted to go after her, but something else had caught my attention. They were also removing just from medical help. Eid was still holding on to me, his grip never flattering despite my struggles and pleas. Most of the adults were too busy with the others to notice me, but they noticed when I started shouting again. You cannot let him go. You cannot let him go. Rose, calm down, said Albetra, her voice smiled. How could she not get what was going on? It's over. It is not over, not until I get my hands around his throat and choke the life out of him. Albetra and some of the others seems to realize that something seriously was happening now, but they don't appear to think it had anything to do with Jess. They were all giving me the rose is crazy look. I could come to know so well in recent days. Get her out of here, said Albetra. Get her cleaned up and calm down. She don't give any more instruction than that. But somehow it was understood that Drimit could be the one to deal with me. He came over and took me from Eid. In the brief changes of captors, I tried to break away, but Drimit was too fast and too strong. He grabbed my arm and started pulling me away from the scene. We can make this easy or difficult, said Drummond. As we walked through the woods, there is no way I am letting you go to Jess. Besides, he is in the medic clinic, so you could never get near him. If you accepted this, I will release you. If you bolt, you know, I will just restrain you again. I weighed my options. The need to make Jess suffer was still pounding in my blood, but Drummond was right. For now, okay, I said. He hesitated a moment, perhaps wondering if I was telling the truth, and then let go of my arm. When I don't run off, I felt him relax very, very slightly. Albetra told you to clean up. I said evenly. So, we are going to the med clinic? Drimit scoffed. Nice try. I'm not letting you near him. We will go. We will get first tried somewhere else. He led me off an angel from the attack location towards an area still at the edge of campus. I quickly realized where he was going. It was a cabin back when there had been more guardians on campus. Some had actually stayed at these little outposts, providing regular protection for the school's boundaries. They could long since been abandoned, but this one had been 
cleaned up when Christians aren't have visited. She is preferred hanging out here than in the school's guest house where other Morai regarded her as a potential strigoi. He opened the door. It was dark inside, but I could see well enough to catch him find matches and light a grizzling lettern. It don't provide a huge amount of light, but it was fine for our eyes. Glancing around, I saw that Tasha really had done a good job with the place. It was clean and almost cozy. The bed made up with a soft quick and a couple of chairs pulled up to the fireplace. There was even some food, canned and packaged, in the kitchen off the side of the room. Sit down, said Jamit, gesturing to the bed. I did, and in about a minute, he had a fire going to warm the place up. Once it was in full blast, he grabbed a first, first aid kit and a bottle of water from the counter and walked back over to the bed, dragging a chair so he could sit opposite me. You have to let me go, I begged. Don't you see? Don't you see how Jess had to pay? He tortured her. He did horrible things to her. Dremit wet some gaze and dabbed it to the side of my forehead. It stung. So I apparently had a cut there. He will be punished, believe me, and the others. With what? I asked bitterly. Detention? This is as bad as Victor Dishwag. Nobody does anything about here. People commit crimes and get away with it. He needs to hurt. They all need to. Dremit passed, his cleaning, giving me a concerned look. Rose, I know you're upset, but you know we don't punish people like that. It is... Savage? Yeah. What is wrong with that? I could bite. It could stop them from doing it again. I could barely sit there. Every part of my body filmed with furry. They need to suffer for what they did. And I want to be the one to do it. I want to hurt them all. I want to kill them all. I started to get up, suddenly feeling like I could explode. His hands were on my shoulder in a flash, shoving me back down. The first aid was long forgotten. His expression was a mixture of both worry and fierceness as he held me down. I fought against him and his fingers bit in tighter. Rose, snap out of this. He was healing now too. You don't mean any of it. You have been stressed and under a lot of pressure. It is making a terrible event that much worse. Stop it. I shouted back at him, you're doing it, just like you always do. You always so responsible no matter how awful the things are. What happened to you wanting to kill Victor in prison, huh? Why was that okay, but not this? Because that was an excretion. You know it was, but this, this is something different. There is something wrong with you right now. No, there is something right with me. I was sizing him up, hoping my words distracts him. It was... Fast enough, maybe, just maybe, I could pass him. I am the only one who wants to do anything around here. And if that is wrong, I am sorry. You keep wanting me to be some impossible good person, but I am not. I am not a saint like you. Neither of us is a saint, he said dryly. Believe me, I don't. I made my move, leaping out and shoving him away. I got him off me, but I don't get far. I have barely gotten two feet from the bed when he sized to me again and pinned me down, this time using the full weight of his body to keep me immobilized. Somehow, I know I should have realized it was an impossible escape plan, but I could not think straight. Let me go. I yield for the hundredth time tonight, trying to free my hands. No, he said, voice hard and almost desperate. Not until you break out of this. This is not you. That was hot tear in my eyes. It is. Let me go. It is not. It is not you. It is not you. That was an agony in his voice. You are wrong. It is. My words suddenly dropped off. It is not you. It was the same thing. I could say to Lisa when I watched, terrified, as she used your magic to torture Jess. I could stood there, unable to believe what she was doing. She had not realized she had lost her control and was on the verge of becoming a monster. And now, looking into Dremit's eyes, seeing this panic and love, I realized it was happening to me. I was the same as she could be, so caught up, so blinded by irrational emotions that I don't even recognize my own actions. It was like I was being controlled by something else. I tried it to fight it off, to shake off the feelings burning through me. They were too strong. I could not do it. 
I could not let them go. They were take me over completely, just as they could have done to Anna. I must grab Rose. Said Dermot. It was only my name, but it was so powerful, filled with so much. Dermot had such absolute faith in me, faith in my own strength and godness, and he had strength, strength to a strength. I could see he was not afraid to lend me if I needed it. Dried might have been onto something about me, resenting Lisa, but she was completely off about Dermot. What we have. had was love we were like two halves of a whole actually ready to support the other neither of us was perfect but that don't matter with him i could defeat his rage that filled me he believed i was strong than it and i was slowly slowly i felt the darkness fade away i stopped fighting him my body trembled but it was no longer with fear it was fear dremet immediately recognized the change and released his hold Oh my god I said voice shaking his hand touched the side of my face fingers light on my cheeks rose he breathed are you okay I swallowed back more tears i i think so for now it's over he said he was still touching me this time brushing the hair from my face it's over everything is all right I shook my head. No, it is not. You you don't understand. It is true. Everything I was worried about about Anna, about me taking away Spritz craziness. It is happening, Rumet. Lisa lost it out there with Jess. She was out of control, but I stopped her because I sucked away her anger and put it into myself. And it is it's horrible. It's like I don't know a puppet. I cannot control myself. You're strong. He said. it won't happen again no i said i could hear my voice cracking as i struggled to sit up it will happen again i'm going to be like anna i am going to get worse and worse this time it was bloodlust and hate i wanted to destroy them i needed to destroy them next time i don't know maybe it's it will just be craziness like my scrap maybe i'm already crazy and that's why i'm seeing manson maybe it will be depression like lisa used to get i will keep falling and falling into the pit and then i could be like anna and kill no dremet interrupted gently he moved his hands towards mine our foreheads nearly touching it won't happen to you you're too strong you will fight it just like you did this time i only did because you were there He wrapped his arms around me, and I buried my face in his chest. I cannot do it myself. I whispered, "You can," he said. There was a timorous note in his voice. "You're strong. You are so strong. It's why I love you." I squeezed my eyes shut. "You should not. I'm going to become something terrible. I might already be something terrible." I thought back to my past behaviors. the way i could been snapping at everyone the way i could try to to scare raya and kamli dremet pulled away so that he could look me in the eyes he cut my face in his hands you're not he owned he said i won't let you no matter what what i won't let you emotion filled my body again but now it was not hate or rage and thing like that it was warm and wonderful and had my heart ache in a good way i wrapped my arms around his neck and our lips met the kiss was pure love sweet and blissful with no desire or darkness studied though the intensity of our kissing increased it was it was still filled with love but became much more something hungry and powerful the electricity that had crackled between us when i could fought and held him down yearly or retended wrapping around us now it reminded me of the night we could been under victor's lust spell both of us driven by inner focus we could not control it was like we were starving or drowning and only other person could save us i clung to him one arm around his neck while the other had gripped his bag so hard that my nails practically dug in he laid me back down on the bed his hands wrapped around my waist and then one of them slid down the back of my thigh and pulled it up 
so that it nearly wrapped around him. At the same time, we both pulled back briefly. Still, hope so close. Everything in the world rested at the moment. We can not, he told me. I know. I agreed. Then his mouth was on the mind again, and this time I know there could be no turning back. There was no walls this time. Our bodies wrapped together as he tried to get off my coat, then his shirt, then my shirt. It really was a lot, like we could fought out on the quiet earlier, that same passion and heat. I think at the end of the day, the instincts that power fighting and sex are not any different. They all come from an animal side of us. Yet. As more and more clothes came off, it went beyond just animal passion. It was sweet and wonderful at the same time. When I looked into his eyes, I could see without a doubt that he loved me more than anyone else in the world, that I was his salvation, the same way that he was mine. I could never expect my first time to be in the cabin in the woods. But I realized the place don't matter, the person did. With someone you loved, you could be anywhere and it could be incredible. Being in the most luxurious bed in the world could not matter if you were with someone you don't love. And oh, I love him. I loved him so much that it hurt. All of our clothes finally ended up in the pile of the floor, but the feel of his skin on mine was more than enough to keep me warm. I could not tell where my body ended and his began, and I decided then that that was how I always wanted it to be. I don't want us to ever be apart. I wish I had the world to describe sex, but nothing I can say could really capture how amazing it was. I felt nervous, excited, and ever a zillion other things. Dremit seemed so wise and skilled and infinitely patient. Just like with our combat trainings, following his lead seems like a natural thing, but he was also more than willing to let me take control too. We were equals at last, and every touch held power, even the slightest brushing of his fingertips. When it was over, I lay back against him, my body hurt, yet at the same time it felt amazing, blissful and content. I wish I could be doing this a long time ago, but I also know it could not have been right until exactly this moment. I rested my head on Rimmet's chest. Taking comfort in his warmth, he kissed my forehead and ran his fingers through my hair. I love you, Rosa. He kissed me again. I will always be here for you. I'm not going to let you anything happen to you. The words were wonderful and dangerous. He should not have said anything like that to me. He should not have been promising he could protect me. Not when he was supposed to delegate his life to protecting Morai like Lisa. I could not be first in his heart, just like he could not be first in me. That was why I should not have said what I said next, but I did anyway. And I won't let anything happen to you. I promised. I love you. He kissed me again, swallowing off any other words I might have added. We lay together for a while after that, wrapped in, wrapped in each other's arms, not saying much. I could have stayed the way forever, but finally, we knew we had to go. The others could eventually come looking for us to get my report, and if they found us like that, things could almost certainly get ugly. So we get dressed, which was not easy since we kept stopping to kiss. Finally, reluctantly, we left the cabin. We held hands, knowing we could only do. So far, a few more brief moments. Once we were closer to the heart of the campus, we have had to go back to the business as usual. But for now, everything in the world was golden and wonderful. Every step I took was filled with joy, and the air around us seems to hum. Questions still spun in my mind. Of course, what had what had just happened? What had our so-called control gone? For now, I could not care. My body was still warm and wanting him, and I suddenly stopped. Another feeling. A very unwelcome one was steadily creeping over me. It was strange, like faint, and feeling wakes of nausea mingled with a prickling against my skin. Dremit stopped immediately and gave me a puzzled look. A pale, slightly luminous form materialized in front of us. Manson. He looked the same as ever, or did he? The usual sadness was there, but I could see something else. Something I could not quite put my finger on. Panic, frustration. 
I could have almost sworn it was fear, but honestly, what could a ghost have to be afraid of? What is wrong? Asked Drummond. Did you see him? I whispered. Drummond followed my gaze. See who? Manson. Manson. Troubled expression grew darker. I might not have been able to adequate identify it, but I know it was not anything good. The nausea feeling with me intensified, but somehow I know it had nothing to do with him. Rose, we should go back," said Dremit carefully. He still was not on board with me seeing ghosts, but I don't move. Manson's face was saying something else to me, or trying to. There was something here, something important that I needed to know, but he could not communicate with it. What I asked, what it is? A look of frustration crossed his face. He pointed off behind me, then dropped his hand. Tell me," I said. My frustration mirroring his dreamed was looking back and forth between me and Manson. Though Manson has probably only an empty space to him, I was too fixated on Manson to worry what dreamed might think. There was something here, something big. Manson opened his mouth, wanting to speak as in previous time, but still unable to get the words out. Except this time, after several agonizing seconds. He managed it. The words were nearly inaudible. They are coming.